Give it up for Sarah Garofalo. <laughs> you all to the basement of the bar, compliments of Michaela's 16th birthday party. Uh, I did volunteer, I was like, I said, Vargas, can I go grab her down here? I'll be like, happy birthday, Mr. President. No. <laughs> Give you a real show. Um, <laughs> so guys, I have to get something off my chest. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't even get to the joke yet, I love it. Um, I want to know, like, whose brilliant idea was it to, when they were making bras, like, they're like, you know what, the cups, the band, it's gotta, gotta involve a letter, um, it's gotta be part of the alphabet. Well, problem is, I am, like, halfway through the alphabet at this point, <laughs> and uh, I'm not really happy about it. Uh, I had a guy one time, he asked me, he's like, Sarah, I, got, I gotta ask, I gotta ask, how big are they, how big? And I said, Listen, they are a size K. I know, right? K for kill me, Jesus. Uh, a size K, and he goes, oh, so, so you like coffee? I'm like what? And he goes, Keurig, K cups. Okay, he gets bonus points for creativity. Come on, what, what are you guys? I'm a Starbucks girl. I don't do Keurig. I'm Starbucks all the time. Wow, guys. All right, so speaking of titties, who likes strip clubs? Oh, there we go, there's the energy. All somebody had to say was strip clubs and shit. Man, we got some really interesting. Um, I always love for like the bigger chain strip clubs. They're always like location, think of population. Small town strip clubs, I know, right? Small town strip clubs, they'll throw them right next to family video. Uh, <laughs> And it's always this like crusty, old looking building. It's never like anything beautiful. Maybe it was once a pizza hut, you know, kind of esque. Uh, the one I've been referencing, it was painted bright bubblegum pink. So when I was a child, I used to be like, Dad, is that where Barbie lives? And my dad was like, yeah, and look, her friends Crystal Meth and Heroin Hillary are over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I, like the one thing about this place though, I don't know, I need to know their business method because at this point they have outlived Family Video and Family Video had a porn section, if you guys remember correctly, so I don't even know how that was possible. So I was like, you know what, I gotta Google this place. So I looked it up, I went through re the reviews and my absolute favorite, this guy wrote, take yourself to Burger King, get yourself a milkshake, you'd get more satisfaction. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> I just want to check it out for nostalgia now, man. Um, I recently made my Netflix debut. Thank you. I am uh, a featured background actress in a bonfire scene of a docu-series. I'm, fam I'm basically famous at this point, guys. Thank you. Um, after I had applied, they reached back out to me and they said, uh, so this bonfire, um, it's taking place at an alt-right party and they will be burning books. Are you still okay with this? <laughs> well, that went from harmless to racist real fast. All right, uh, I mean, I guess if they put reenactment somewhere, maybe, maybe okay, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So we get to this neighborhood in this house, and I'm already like, great, we're in a neighborhood, and these two prop guys walk out with a 20-foot giant Nazi flag. And I'm like, oh boy. And they, they just laid it out on the lawn. I'm like, oh sure, let's go ahead and invite the neighbors. We'll have a picnic. Like, that doesn't look suspicious at all. Um, and luckily they filmed the whole thing in complete silence. So I'm like, okay, great. It's in silence. There was no chance, no salutes. Thank God. So the other day I was scrolling through Netflix and I'm like, oh my God, there I am. Why am I excited? I play a Nazi lover. Okay, so I click on it and I scroll to the part and there I am, having the time of my life, just laughing, having a good time at this bonfire, and then the voiceover starts. <laughs> These people were saying things like, fuck the Jews, and Jews are demons in skin sacks, and I'm like, oh no. Oh boy. Um, could, could, we have, could we just have not have had my face when we said that, oh God. I love it, my dad was like, hey Sarah, any exposure is exposure. <laughs> Not in this case. I have to explain myself in auditions on that one. No, thank you. Um, 
I uh, have recently figured out that I am terrified to fly. Uh, not because of all the other stuff. I'm sure you guys have seen in the news, like all the stuff that's been going on and the people in the, um, that they, uh, the, the flights have been canceled, the pause, none of that. I found out from one of my friends that when you die mid-flight on a plane, they sit you upright and then they just cover you with whatever they have handy, like a rug or a blanket. I'm like, uh... Like, do, do you explain to the people around you, like, how does this work? So I confirmed with her that this is a true fact. I'm like, you can't just, like, shove them somewhere. I mean, they're dead. It's not like they give, give a shit. I, I'm like, I didn't sign up to sit in death row when I get on the plane. Like, now I'm going to be paranoid checking everybody around me. Like, are you alive? Have a pulse, anything? Are you alive? So then through my brain, I just thought of all the worst scenarios that could happen. So I picture that this guy dies and he's next to a family on their first time trip to Disney World. <laughs> like, these parents have saved up so much money. They are, they've taken the time off. <laughs> they want to give memories of a lifetime. Now thanks to Phil, they sure for, sure for real have memories. Um, but, uh, but then, uh, like, d nobody's going to want to ride the Haunted Mansion ride after that. because These kids are scarred for life. I don't know what to say. All right, guys, thank you. That's my time. Give it up for Sarah Garofalo, ladies and gentlemen.